In a new op-ed, the U.S. Surgeon General is calling on Congress to take action and pass legislation that would put a warning label on social media apps. Earlier, our Caitlin Huey Burns spoke with U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy. And the U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy joins us now. Dr. Murthy, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Of course. Very glad to be with you today. So what would you like this warning label to specifically say, and what kind of impact do you think this label could have? Well, first, let's talk about why this is important. It, what we are living through right now is a youth mental health crisis, and social media has unfortunately emerged as one of the contributors to that crisis. Last year, when I issued an advisory on youth mental health and social media, I noted that when young people, adolescents in particular, are spending more than three hours a day on social media, that's associated with a doubling of risk of anxiety and depression symptoms. And what's the average use right now? It's 4.8 hours a day. So we have reason to be concerned, but the warning label is important to help parents know about the risks, to know that the harmful content that kids are often exposed to, whether it's violent or sexual content, the bullying and harassment that many of them experience online, and the excessive use that's often engendered by features that would seek to manipulate their brains into excessive use, all of this is contributing to these mental health strains. And parents and kids have, a, have a, I think, a right to know about the harms that they're enduring. And, and I want to see if you can provide a little bit of context to kind of the, 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 the urgency that you're calling for this. I, I'm curious, I mean, how often is a warning from the surge, Surgeon General label, that kind of label, how often is it applied? Well, it is unusual to apply a Surgeon General's warning label, but we find ourselves in a unique and unusual situation. This youth mental health crisis that we are living through with extraordinarily high rates of anxiety, depression, and suicide among young people, this has become the defining public health challenge of our time. And a warning label is one part of a larger set of solutions that we need to make social media safe for our kids. Last year, I called on Congress to put in place safety standards and data transparency requirements that would help to achieve that goal of making social media safer. And the good news is that we've done this kind of thing in the past. When it comes to cars, for example, we didn't just accept that the high rate of car accident related deaths that we were seeing in the 70s and 80s were just a natural part uh, of modernity. We didn't assume that we had to live with that. We said we can make cars safer and we established the independent standards and enforced them that got us seatbelts and airbags and crash testing and a host of other measures. We've got to take that same step here and we've got to do that with urgency because our kids' health and well-being is at stake. And as you mentioned, you have been calling on Congress to take action on this issue for a while. As you know and as you've noted, this kind of label would need to be approved by Congress. Um, how, how uh, Have you spoken to lawmakers about this? What's been the reception? And do you have confidence that they could actually pass something here? Well, this label would require congressional approval, and that is similar to the labels that we have for tobacco and for alcohol. And by the way, the data from that experience with tobacco and alcohol tell us that labels can, in fact, be effective at increasing awareness and changing behavior. But when it comes to Congress acting on this, look, I have had conversations for several years with members of Congress about social media. There's bipartisan interest and concern uh, about what's happening in terms of impact on youth mental health. And I think we are seeing more momentum now than at any time in the last 20 years to actually doing something to make social media safer. So I find all that encouraging. But my message to Congress is that we have to act with urgency. The most important thing we've got to do is make social media safer with safety standards. But we also have to warn parents and kids about the harms, and that is where a warning label comes in. I recognize that uh, that this is an unusual year to call for, for action like this. I recognize that this is a complicated issue. But the truth is, when I think about the moms and dads and the kids that I've met across the country who are struggling with the mental health harms of social media, to them, they don't care that it's hard or it's complex. What they want, understandably, is a safer environment for their kids. And that is not an unreasonable thing for parents to want. It's why all of us, uh, regardless of how complicated this may be, need to step up and take action to make social media safer. Uh, because as a parent, I can't think of anything that is more important than safeguarding the mental health and well-being of our kids. And that is what is on the table right now. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you know, you're a parent, I'm a parent. I think we're all wondering, you know, in the meantime, without a label, what should parents do? What should teacher school administrators do to address what you are calling a, a mental health crisis among young people? Yeah, so in, in the op-ed that I wrote today for the New York Times, I actually laid out a number of steps that all of us can take while we're waiting for Congress to do its part. Uh, when it comes to schools, keeping phones and social media out of learning time, in particular in schools, is really vital to protecting not just learning, but also time where kids can actually build relationships with one another and get to know one another. As parents, uh, we can take steps too. Uh, we can, if our kids are not on social media, delay the use of social media until after middle school at least. That's the approach we are planning to take with our kids. If our kids are already on social media, what you can do is to create tech-free zones in your child's life to protect areas that are vital for their development, like sleep, in-person interaction, and physical activity. This could look like saying that meal times when we're all together are going to be times where we put away our devices. It could look like saying an hour before bedtime and throughout the night, we're going to take away devices and give them back in the morning to protect the quality and quantity of sleep. But most importantly, Caitlin, we have to do this together as parents. This work is hard. It's not easy to do on your own, especially when your child comes up to you and says, everyone else is on social media. Do you want me to be the only one who's left out? But if we together as parents make a pact to say, these are measures we are going to take together for our kids, not only is it easier for us, but it's easier for our kids, too, because they know that they won't be alone. 